So yeah, really happy to have Brittany here. We're having drinks today, guys. Like, because um, you know what? Cheers, don't cheers you think? to that. Cheers to that. Yeah. Because this is a celebration. Mm. This is a celebration, guys. This is actually a longtime friend of mine. And she got her product onto the Shark Tank. You're going to learn a lot more about that. I'm so excited, man, because um, it just it takes so much work and dedication to do that. And, uh, you know what I'm saying? We're going to talk about a bunch of stuff, like what's the stats of the average inventor that tries to get on the Shark Tank? We're going to talk about that with Brittany. She's going to tell us a little bit about her journey. And uh, we're going to keep it just a live, casual conversation, man. Keep it fun. You know, probably it's not all going to be PG-13, but, you know, <laughs> you guys can always you have just... to warn people? Yeah. Jeez. Well, whatever, <laughs> man. You know, if we swear, we swear, bro. You know oh, what I'm saying? Shit. If somebody gets offended by a all swear right. word, I love we're it. probably not going to be best friends. Yes, probably not. <laughs> you know probably not. Oh, man. I think you cannot, like, be an inventor without swearing quite a few times a day. I mean, yeah, because there's, like, think that's... no prototype is perfect, and every time it comes out wrong, you're like, shit. I was going to say the like, ups, the downs, the yeah, in-betweens. Okay. Yeah. There's a lot of them throughout the day, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. So here's for being a stubborn inventor or yes. entrepreneur, because I think one of the most important things to be a good inventor or entrepreneur is that you have to have just the right amount of stubbornness. I'd say like what, I 70, 80 percent stubbornness. How do you put I think a, so. how do you put I, the I number so. on that? I don't know. But there has to be just the right enough and then but also be wise enough to be able to take, you know, um, just be able to know when to work with people and help catapult mm -hmm. your project. Right. And I, I think like the stubbornness goes into also never giving up. You know, it's like, I feel like that goes hand in hand Yeah. because there's so many times where on my inventing path, Rodrigo mm -hmm. and I have worked on multiple um, inventions together. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like um, you just have to be consistent and never give yeah. up because so many yeah. people will tell you, you know, think you're crazy or tell you you're crazy actually, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? And I've had that from a few family members actually. Yeah. Um, but I also think that, you know, believing in yourself and, and never giving up is definitely a key to being a great inventor. Yeah. Uh -huh. Pow. Pow. I love it. I love yes. it, man. And it's, you know, it's, and it's hard. It's, I think it's a hard thing to understand also as an inventor. I'm an inventor myself that, you know, it's not always your first idea that, you know, that takes off. The first idea might be a learning, a stepping stone for you to understand oh, what 1, the process looks like. 1,000%. You know, so you understand, you know how to how to go about doing things right right like exactly learning the steps yeah and i feel like from one of my first inventions and you were with me through that process too is you know even first learning about 3d prototyping you know i was yeah. like what what is this and mm -hmm. like all of these machines now that you have are yeah. incredible um but going into actually seeing the manufacturer when we worked with that one company yeah yeah you know and actually seeing the process and seeing the mold be done and seeing your yeah. plastic parts come out and all of that is also fun in the inventing game as well. Absolutely, yes. absolutely. It's um, it's so cool to see it come to life, and I think that's um, I think what most inventors will find out or entrepreneurs will find out that making the product is just the first step. Really, if you want to make any money off it, you have to figure out how to monetize. Mm -hmm. People have to want to pay for it. You have to convince them somehow or whatever you know through social proof and marketing yes. and. Um, and there's definitely I feel like um, a lot of hard work in between there because there's so many times that people you know you may say or somebody in, introduces you oh she's an inventor of this or you know and then of course everyone's like well i have this idea mm -hmm. you know of course everybody has an idea yeah because shark tank has been around for how many years now it's been 14 seasons mm -hmm. um and so they want to of course hey can you help me with this well it's not that easy you know it's yeah, like yeah. yes of course we'll help but it's like you actually have to put some skin in the game to, yeah, yeah. to get things done because yeah, yeah. it's not just coming up with an idea and then it's on the shelves. Right. It's right. a lot of steps in between right. there. So I'm going to, I have a couple questions that I have. So really I want to know like, okay, why, why did you develop this idea? Well, first of all, and my decide, product. Yeah. yeah. Let's get a little intro. The Chub Rub Patch. And people probably are thinking, what in the heck is that? And this is a patch that goes in between your thighs, one on the left, one on the right, mm -hmm. that um, you no longer have chafing. And so maybe some people have heard of it as chub rub or thigh chafing. Um, men, women, all different sizes, shapes, colors get this. And I struggled with it. My sisters have struggled with mm -hmm. it. I mean, for I, I can remember 
being in the seventh grade going to Cedar Point in Ohio mm -hmm. and having this issue mm -hmm. and always being ashamed because it's like, oh, I'm the big girl. Mm -hmm. No, that's not the reason. Mm -hmm. It's because how your body's made. Yeah. And so um, my sister and I were actually at a Dolphins game mm -hmm. and she was in a porta potty. She's probably going to kill me for saying this, <laughs> but hey, it's already out there. She was going, she was in a porta potty and she was in there for like, I mean, it was long, like five to seven minutes. And mm -hmm. we all know that's a very, very long time. And so I was like, oh my God, people are staring at me. I'm looking at them. What's going on? So I'm kind of like, hey, what's going on in there? She's like, I'm coming out. So she comes out and she's like as pale as a ghost. So I'm like, are you okay? What's going on? And she's like, I had to wear um, Spanx underneath my dress because mm -hmm. my thighs were going to chafe. Because, you know, you're tailgating, you're walking a football game, you're walking miles. Yeah, yeah. You know, so... I was like, oh my God, you almost passed out. You know, she was so uncomfortable. It's like a hundred degrees outside. I mean, it's Miami. Yeah, we all yeah. know. Yeah. And so I was like, we have to think of something else, you know? And my brain has always kind of been like, hey, how can I figure it out? How can I um, make it better? How can I yeah. um, make a product that will work for me? Mm -hmm. And so I actually contacted Rodrigo. I was going to try and license the product. And then I was like, okay, during the pandemic, there yeah. were so many people that were like, oh, this product is great but not at this time because it was, yeah. the world was crazy at that time. Yeah, yeah. So I came to Rodrigo and I said, hey, you know, I, I want to manufacture this product. How can we do it? And he's like, hey, you know what? I actually, let's try this out. I have a connection. Yep. And so, and it was a great connection because they were out of Canada and um, inventors, product development, people weren't getting any products from China at the time. And I, th I think actually that's a, uh, let me jump on this story yeah. real quick for a second. Cause okay. I think that was kind of funny cause I ordered their product online and it was actually kind of funny cause it's, it was almost like this, but they made it like it was a face mask that you can glue to your face. Mm -hmm. And I ordered it cause I was like, let me give this thing a try. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's what yeah. I do in R and D. We got to right. see what, you know, if something looks interesting, we got to mm -hmm. try it out. Right. So I, I ordered this stuff and I, for the application that I, that was set up for it was horrible. Mm -hmm. So like, I mean, I think if you were to put it over another mask and maybe put it on your face, it might yeah. work, but it wasn't really, it didn't work as like, as well as I thought it, it right. should have been advertised or something. Right. right. But I did remember the, I remembered it cause I ordered some samples and I remembered it for Brittany. I was like, well, this might this actually could work. work. This, this yeah, exactly. company, this, we, I reached out to them and we talked about it and, um, we found a great partnership in them and um and we changed uh, quite a few things to make mm -hmm. it to be the specifics that i needed and what worked for my product but yep. the initial part was there yeah and yeah. so just you you connecting that was yeah. amazing and we just did zoom calls and that's because nobody was leaving i yeah. mean you and i were probably getting together. yeah yeah um nobody's leaving. florida <laughs> yeah exactly florida <laughs> So um, I remember getting samples and I was like, hey, this isn't exactly what we need. Let's try this. And, you know, over a few months, we got it done. Yep. And I wanted it to launch before summer. And so we launched July 4th. And that's kind of when things started happening. And then what happened next was um, my nephew decided to tell me that I needed to be on TikTok. And, you know, I was telling you, I was like, I don't want to be on another social media. I don't want to do this. Yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden I just was consistent and I was like, Hey, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it yeah, yeah. right. And so I was very consistent. I think it was like three to five posts a week. And then we started going viral and we ended up selling out and having to shut down the website and things Dang, just started to go. You bad. heard it here. You heard it here. That's right. <laughs> We're making diamonds, baby. That's right. So yeah, I love it, man. I'm so fucking proud of you, dude. Thank you. There, see, can we now cheers to R that? It's R rated. You know, now. like as an inventor, Shark Tank. Hell yeah! This is where we want to be. And I love it. That money. I love that so much. Yes, thank so, you. So we kind of touched on a little bit about like how long we've been developing the product. I think it mm -hmm. probably went. It's probably like in the three, four years or something like that. Because I remember we. Well, I mean, I'm really bad with time yeah. because. You know, I work for WWE I, as yeah, a makeup yeah. artist and the time kind of just... Ooh, name drop. Oh, yes. Hey, you got to, right? <laughs> um, it, it, time just always flies there, yeah, you know? Yeah. And and honestly, <laughs> like being a makeup artist there and yeah. owning your own business is a lot yeah, to yeah. handle. So yeah. it's a lot. We've but done it well. We've, we've I mean, gotten here. Yeah, yeah. That's right. So this is, uh, you know, and cool thing about doing this is that once you get one, you technically should have enough to be able to launch other products and you know what I'm saying? Um, well, and you know the process better, yeah. you know, and, and that's the reason why I like being an inventor is because yeah. there's no right or wrong. 
Yeah. And like, I'm always that person again, being a makeup artist or hairstylist is there's no right or wrong way to get the look done. Mm -hmm. And I don't really like to follow the rules. So mm -hmm. that's why I think inventing works for me because it's like, Oh, Hey, I know the process. Now I can go and see which works for this product yeah, yeah. or Hey, this, this person may know something about this. Yeah, yeah. And that's why it works out great that way. And I love it. Since you uh, hit on shark tank here, like, what, what is your invi advice for someone that thinks they're ready and, um, you know, that wants to go on Shark Tank? What's your best advice to them? Like they want to apply to get on the show? Yeah, they got a product. I definitely say 1,000% do it, but know that there is a lot of hard work that goes into it. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, you know, I've watched it for how many years? And I've just been like, oh, it, it just seems like so easy. You know, yeah. it's like, a reality show, you apply, you get on, here yeah. you are, here's your product, and that's it. No, there is a lot yeah, yeah. of processes. I mean, you've gone through yeah. all of it with me mm -hmm. and just making videos and, and filling out 50 pages of paperwork yeah. and them checking your stats and everything that lines up. Yeah, yeah. It's really like a full-time job. So I would say absolutely 100% do it. It was a great experience, but definitely know going in that you have to put in the work. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yes. So you talked a little bit about TikTok, and I know that yes. that was one of the big things that helped you blow up. So what is your best advice? I would just have to say, and I think I touched on it before, is consistency. Yeah. It is because I feel like, um, and make it your own. You know, yeah. there's so many, I mean, TikTok to me has really gotten my product off the ground. Because, you know, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook, there's Twitter, all of that. But your numbers get, you get so many more hits on TikTok mm. than you do on any of those other platforms. I'm not mm. saying don't use those other platforms. Right. But for me, it worked. And I could just show that, first of all, I'm a real person. And second of all, this product actually works. Mm -hmm. And I could show that on there and show my audience like, hey, this is what's actually happening. Yeah, and, yeah. and the great thing is, is that all of my followers and um people that are buying my product love the product. So they're on there speaking for me, yeah, you yeah. know, saying, Hey, I bought this. This is amazing. Or like, you know, there's so many people like, why did I not come up with this idea? Yeah, yeah. This I needed this for many years. So it was so great. I mean, I had, I think it was, um, I think it's up to 30 million views. And then there's like, I mean, 50,000 shares or something crazy like that. And so wow. that just like, you go to think and you're like, Holy shit, like 50,000 people have seen it. No, 50,000 plus all those people that they shared it with and how many millions of people have seen this product. Amazing. Yes, it's great. It's a, I mean, it's a new a new era, I think, for inventors. Oh, 1,000%. You, know, um, you know, if you can blow up on there, you can pretty much yeah. fund whatever idea you have if you can connect with yes. the right audience, right? And, it, and exactly. And that's the thing, too. It's like, and just being consistent <laughs> because I feel like there's so many people that I've tried to, you know, hey, you should do TikTok. You have a product. You should do TikTok. I actually have a friend that um, wrote a book mm -hmm. and I told him, hey, you should get on. He's like, I'm older. Like, you know, nobody's going to be doing this. He has way more many views than I do now hmm. because he was consistent. Hmm. I said, do three times a week. You also have to know like the times that people are on. Mm -hmm. And it was like, it's different during the summer than it is during the winter. It's different when people are working and they're on their lunch break or it's 5 p.m., you know, and they're getting off of work mm -hmm. or going to bed at 10 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. You know, it just, you have to figure out those algorithms and yeah. what works for your company or yourself. So hold on. Let's, uh, Mike, a question from an, uh, what, what's oh. that? What's that from an outside Is this a, a, a caller, long time caller? Uh, okay. She's saying talk on Brit's experience working with the WWE. I mean, Hey, why not? You know, why not? Yeah. Um, I have been a makeup artist for, Oof. Oof. Oh, okay. is it real or is it not real? It is really amazing. <laughs> right? Nicely handled. You should be a politician. <laughs> hey, maybe I'll try for the city of Hollywood. Um, working with WWE has been amazing. I have been a makeup artist and a hairstylist for 20 years. Mm -hmm. And I have gotten the opportunity to work with WWE for now. I believe it's going on eight years. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, it's, it's madness. I mean, we are the largest um, entertainment company in the world mm -hmm. and it's taken me to many places. Mm -hmm. I've been to Saudi Arabia. I went to That's so cool. Cardiff. I've been to Europe, you know, like so many different yeah. places with them. I mean, I've traveled the entire United States. I think I'm missing maybe 
three states, wow. four maybe. Um, so in that aspect, it's amazing. Secondly, I feel like it's great because it puts me under pressure because, you know, I'm in charge of a team when I'm there. Mm -hmm. And I feel like you definitely need that in the entrepreneur and inventor world as mm -hmm. well, kind of putting them together. Yeah, because yeah, connecting the dots. Exactly. Because you, I mean, there's a lot of time that you're under pressure mm -hmm. and then it's like, if you drop the ball, you know, things happen. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like it's been amazing. And honestly, like a lot of the, and, and again, I'm plugging my product. Here we are, the Chubro patch. The wrestlers at WWE actually, and I'm not, I'm not making this shit up. They mm -hmm. love the product. If you go on my TikTok, it's the Chub, the Chubro patch and Instagram and Facebook. And you can find um, what I'm talking about because um, there's this guy Otis on there. He's amazing. I mean, he's a, uh, I think he's like a, a bodybuilder was the Olympics or something crazy amazing like that and um he was talking to me about chafing and it was like i'm like i have this product and i'm this is not a lie it's the real story yeah and i said i have this product and he was like oh is it for big dudes like me like joking i'm like no you actually can and i gave it to him and he wore it to disney and his wife contacted me and asked for more of them because she Damn. wanted some too and so now i've probably given them like five or six packages and I told him that I was going to be on Shark Tank. He's like, what do you mean? I've already retweeted it. So I was like, it's amazing. Nice. And I then there's it. also other, you know, the girls that live there, they have thick thighs. And mm -hmm. so, I mean, they're sexy as hell, but mm -hmm. they have thick thighs and thick thighs save lives, guys. Just saying. You heard it here. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think it's great um, because my worlds have kind of come full circle together, mm -hmm. you know, and it's mm -hmm. great. And because it, it's just so great that they have kind of become family to me and have supported me along it, the mate. whole way. And they're going to watch me on Shark Tank on February 17th yeah, at let's... 8 p.m. on ABC. You heard it. You heard it here. Because the thing is, it's like, honestly, like the great thing is about um, my product is that you're placing one on each thigh mm -hmm. and you can wear it up to five days. Okay. It's water resistant. It's it. sweat proof. So you can get in the shower. You can go to the beach. Yep. You can work out. A lot of people work out in it. Mm -hmm. Um it, you go biking, do all sorts of things. And the great thing is too, is that we made it in five different shades mm -hmm. so we can be more inclusive. And so it matches more to your skin tone. So you're more comfortable um, because it's such a um, taboo. Taboo. Kind of talk, not yeah. Taboo so much, but it's like, it's like a thing that's not talked about. Yeah. And I just don't, um, I mean, I guess I'm a very open person. So to me, it's like very normal. Yeah. Um, of course, my product, but even before that, but a lot of people, you know, are, are shying away from it because they think it's, you know, when people are heavy. So mm -hmm. they associate with people having talking about it. Then it says, you know, oh, hey, I'm heavy. That's not the case. Yeah. It's just really about how your pelvis is and how your body's made. Oh, we got the trademark yeah. on the Chub Rub patch. Nick got uh, thick thighs save lives. Chub oh, okay. okay. Saves thighs. A tra trademark. As a trademark? Mm -hmm. Nice. Yes. And the name is also trademarked, right? Mm hmm. Guys, just to throw in a plug real quick for Nick since he worked on this project. Nick Spatola, he's a very good friend of mine and um, a patent attorney that kicks ass. Really cool guy, super intelligent, very fun to work with. Uh, highly recommend him. He's on my preferred partners page. And you can get there by going to my website, limecreativedesign.com. Wow, look at this amazing website. And you go to our partners. So a lot of cool. Nick. Attorneys Nick, here, Nick Spatola. Nick. We'll, we'll focus on Nick today. Nick Spatola been working with me for a long time. Mm -hmm. He's uh, amazing. Registered he patent amazing. attorney practicing all areas of intellectual property. Nick is the man. Talk to him. Give him a call if you have an idea. You need to talk to somebody about it. Copyright, very, very trademark, yeah, yeah, utility, all that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. um, so his information's here. It, you know, the saying is, you never work a day in your life. You yeah. know what you're doing. It's so true, though. Yeah, yeah. It really is so true because I just. And I don't know if I was like born with this, but I just feel like I love inventing. Yeah. It's so like to see your product come to life. It's it's like having a baby, I think, really? right? I mean, I don't have a baby, but maybe. And, and Brent, like, look, you, you're already being you're, you've already become successful, pretty successful with this project. Mm -hmm. So imagine when it really blows up. Mm -hmm. I mean, how that's gonna feel? Oh, and I mean, then I already feel and how right, hungry so. are you gonna be to fucking do it again? Of course. Oh, you I know what I'm saying? It. I mean, I love it, love it, love it. I mean. That's this is it. This is it right here. But you know, how many other ideas have you worked on before this one? Exactly. I how mean, many? Rough, three, rough, four, rough. five. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. See, so guys, do not be discouraged if the first mm -hmm. product you come up with yep. doesn't like you know doesn't make it, man. Because there's a it's a it's kind of like a, a thing of numbers and it's a thing of right time, like, right what place. contacts you have mm -hmm. also and you and what contacts you create. Exactly, you know that's because exactly what it is. You didn't have every contact you no. needed when you started doing it. Exactly. You, you go, and so you know, actually, that's funny you say that is because I think a lot of people um, when they think of contacting people, right? It's like actually meeting in person. Well, that's not really how the world works anymore. You know, it's like about, um, we do zoom calls, we do all of that. Yeah. But where I get most of my contacts from is LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, normally you can, can't call Joe Smith at such and such, um, place. But if you go on LinkedIn, Joe Smith is using that as their social media. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of times that I message them on them and I'll, get right through you heard it here linkedin no it is amazing it really is i love it man awesome i want to talk about one more thing talk to me can we talk about this amazing packaging hold up wait a minute put a little chubra patch in it i love it no so, i just wanted to say thank you because i am obsessed with this and your company worked on it and i think it's amazing and it's so great because so many times people um get a product and don't read the directions, mm -hmm. maybe myself included. Um, and I feel like they made it so easy because it's like they have pictures and everything to show exactly how to do it. And it's just fun and exciting. And I feel like when um, we made this packaging, it was during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And I felt like it was so nice because people would open it and get excited because it's cute. And mm -hmm. a lot of people don't get fun stuff in the mail anymore. So it made them feel good. That's a good point. And I wanted them to, I, I kind of explained to, John that was working with me. Yeah, yeah. Um, big I, shout out John Medina. Yes, love him, love him. Um, I want I explained to him like I want people to feel good about using this product and not mm -hmm. be ashamed. Yeah. And he made that amazing yeah. for me. So thank you, John. I appreciate it. Yes. But I've always had a lot of fun enjoying, like, in, in inventing with you and helping you take the ideas out of your mind and yes. turn them into actual tangible actual physical product. products. Yes. Yep. So thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it, and I just want to let everybody know that watch me on February 17th on ABC at 8 p.m. Eastern on Shark Tank. Shark Woo! Tank! The Chub Rub Patch! Guys, thanks so much for being here. We're always looking to interview really cool and fun people with a lot of um, you know, knowledge that, that aren't afraid of sharing their knowledge with people, whether it's about manufacturing or entrepreneurship. This is what we're trying to do is connect, connect you guys, the viewers, with... Uh, real people really making it happen. Uh, I mean, Brittany lived four doors down down from me. Yes, we didn't even know it. We didn't even know it. Yep. Yes, that was so funny. So you know, it's you never know. You never know what you can contribute to the world, and you know, until you reach out. Yeah, and and if you don't try, it's never going to happen. You know, what I'm saying exactly. sometimes you have an idea now, and you kind of you'll see it come to life five years later. Well, guess what? That means that you kind of had your finger on a pulse. You knew that that idea was needed and you just didn't act on it. Well, guess what? Somebody else just made a million bucks and that could have been you. So, um, and this goes for myself as well. So I'm yes. not, I'm not trying to like guilt anybody into like, just do it, but right? yeah, yeah, man. Cause like I have a project, um, you know, that I have in the works as well. We'll talk more about that on the next mm -hmm. podcast, but guys, uh, thank you Stay so much tuned. for checking us out. Stay tuned. Shark tank, February 17th, 8 PM ABC. I love it. Guys, we'll catch you soon. Woo! Ah! <laughs>